We'll, uh, it is now 7.30. I'll call the East Line Board of Selectmen meeting to order. Today's May 17th, 2017. If you all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. We, um, uh, some business travel and actually some business travel. Uh, Mrs. Hardy's up in Maine with her students working. Um, and um, Mr. Daigle is off on a business assignment. So we have four. We have a quorum. Are there any additional agenda items? Yes, I'd like to, uh, first of all, to amend item 2G to say ex enter into exec executive session for the purpose of discussing personnel issues slash <coughs> contract negotiations yeah that's a good um, uh, change there that's a motion yes okay can I get a second second okay all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. okay is there something else and also to add as item 2j discussion and possible action on the temporary communication yeah. tower contract They'll be J, they'll be at the end? Yes. Okay. With a motion, we need a second. Second. Or we can't do anything. Okay, it's been seconded. All, uh, any comments? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Great delegations. Uh, Mr. Rando, I'd see you there. You generally you speak. Would you like to come up? Yeah. Great. Good evening. Good evening, Ron. I wish I could say gentlemen because there's no ladies here tonight. I mean, lady on the court, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, I got a lot of things to say, but uh, you're probably not going to go, you're not going to listen because you never have. <clears throat> Every time I've told you something, you cost the taxpayers more money. My first item is. I think we've got to put the time clocks back in the town hall. I think we have some town employees that might be working part time. And I would like to see time clocks put back, in, back into the town hall to remedy the problem. That's all I'm going to say. I have more, but I'm not going to say any more about it right now. <clears throat> now I'd like to talk about the police chief. I've been doing a lot of calling, a lot of studying about this deal. I think it's going to cost this town a lot more money than you people are telling me. But I think the police chief should be hired under a contract. Three years. Renewed after three years. Because if he's hired by way how the state hires him, he can't fire him if he does anything wrong. So I think our police chief should be hired by contract, three-year maximum. And... Also, he just gets his retirement on his base salary, not overtime. Plus, vehicles should not be taken home and used for private use. Town work only, period. Now, let's see. As Mr. Rando is probably called and stupid and dumb a lot of times by you people, but that's all right. Can't hurt my feelings because you never did, you never could. My daughter's house burned down May 15th, a year ago. May 15th. Okay? It took them almost a year to get the permit to rebuild it. My grandson, who was living there, got a place to live. He lived up here in the apartments for a while. And the insurance company paid his rent. But as far as I know now, it, uh, they've canceled it because it's taken too long to get the house up. And like I told you at the meeting the other night, I am talking to people. I am serious about hiring a private detective to do some investigation for me. Because I think, because my name is Rando, 
my grandsons and grandkids have had a problem in this town. Okay? And I've told you that before. So I'm working hard on it. Uh, if I can find the right guy, I'm going to hire him. And I have a few more. And now I want to talk about things that I have said to this board for years. Number one was the boardwalk. They knew that the railroad was going to change the bridge and the tracks, but they built it anyway. At, at, by the time we're, we have finished, that boardwalk is pretty close to $20 million of the taxpayers' money. <clears throat> the other thing. Um, The um, swimming pool in the high school. That is the biggest boondoggle that I can imagine. I stood up at that meeting and I told them when I was there I, for the whole meeting and I said, let's build this thing right. We need a makeup air unit in there to take care of it. Oh no, we got a special coating that's going to go on the ceiling. Well, the outfit that put the coating on the ceiling went bankrupt. And what did that cost us? I don't know what it cost us, but the ceiling got pretty, the, the steel was pretty rusty from what I understand. And now we're going to spend, I think, uh, Mr. Uh, School Superintendent said at the meeting of night, over $600,000 to do it right. <coughs> and I told you back then, how to do it right, but you didn't listen to me. I put, I think I put in over 500 swimming pools, give or take a few, did my day working for the gas company. I know what I'm talking about when it comes to swimming pools. And, so that cost the taxpayers money. And on the tennis court, I told you, under that tennis court, you had a brook that ran down over the bank under the tennis court. Oh, no, that's not. Well, you dug it up. What happened? There was a brook under there, a stream. Cost the taxpayers another $109,000. So I think we have a problem in this town. And what I'm thinking we got to do is change our government a little bit. And I think if I'm still alive, come election time, and see what we can do. Because when I ran for the first for the first uh, for the board of selectmen, I packed this room here, and they, wa and they called the fire marshal and wanted to cancel it. But one of my men, Mr. Kaplan, says, "Oh no, we'll go outside and." in the building out there, or whatever you call it, and we had, our, we had our caucus there. So, I don't know if I can do it again, but I'm sure in hell going to try. Because I think we got to change this right on from the top, right on down. The apartments downstairs don't care about the taxpayer, just about the golden goose up there in north end of town. And I'm going to stay till the end. Thank you. Good. Be happy to answer some of those um, okay. misstatements. <clears throat> Anybody else like to speak? We don't have a public hearing t tonight, so this will be the opportunity, the only opportunity until the very end, that you get a chance to speak. Good evening. How are you, gentlemen? Good. 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 If you state, state your name and your address. Sure. Yeah. My name is H. Brian Dram. I'm an attorney. I represent the Willard's Zone property at 28 Shore Road in Nyanic. Um, if you want to be, if you want me to be heard on uh, the issue, which I believe is E on your agenda now, mm -hmm. I'd be happy to talk to you now. Yes. If you want me to wait till E, I'll wait till E. Generally, we do it now. With this is at a public hearing tonight. We're just uh, listening to the public works director give us uh, instructions from the. I think there's a board of governors over there about there the traffic. <coughs> yep. So you can speak to that now. Great. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate you uh, guys hearing me out this evening. So I, I want to just start by saying that, and I know this is well beyond your jurisdiction. Um, but there was a uh, matter that was before the Board of Governors at Oak, uh, Oak Grove, and my clients were made aware of that. So this is the first time um, the other day, I believe it was the 15th, that they got the mailing 
uh, regarding the signage, and they happen to own property right across the street from where the signage is going to go, um, and they were never made aware by Oak Grove. I know that is well beyond your jurisdiction, right. um, but I want to make you gentlemen aware of that. So, um, pardon the uh, presentation; it wouldn't, it's not as uh, polished as I would like, um, because we were just made aware of it the other day. Um, <clears throat> the Oak Grove did make uh, some points as it relates to um, this specific signage which I want to, which I believe is in your packet. It's an email from um, Jim Weaver, who happens to be the president, to Joe, who is the public works director. Um, he says that the board has approved the, these no parking signs for five reasons. Number one, it would make it safer for, for pedestrians walking on shore road between the right-of-way steps and the beach without cars parked on the side of the road. Um, what I will tell you is that there are pass, passways or walkways, right of ways that are through the private property that access the beach. Um, and it's, it would be very feasible for these pedestrians and what they should be doing is walking down the steps through the right of way that goes in between some of the homes to the beach and then walk down to the public beach. They're utilizing the road, I understand that, um, but that is, there are right of ways for, uh, for, them, to, for them to take. Um, it talks about um, that there being a lot of no parking signs um, on Shore Road. Um, by my count, there are two at present. One is in front of a fire hydrant, a little redundant. We all know we can't park in front of a fire hydrant. And the second one is at the, uh, is at the Yacht Club. Um, so there's no other parking, no parking signs. So there's about 400 yards of Shore Road. This encompasses about 90 feet of the, of the pedestrian problem. Um, I think that these, are, these, sign, these specific signs uh, may be asked for a different purpose than just pedestrian, uh, pedestrian issues. Um, it would eliminate uh, the parking of cars by non-members for the use of the beach. Um, there are, to my client's knowledge, this doesn't happen. Um, as a matter of fact, to use the beach, you have to have a, a, a Oak Grove tag. And if you don't have one of the Oak Grove tags, a security uh, member, security team, who's been hired to remove people that don't have these wristbands, are removed. So even if they did park there, they couldn't utilize the beach because they're not allowed to. Um, uh, they make a point that it would be safer for the people on the um, western side to back out of their driveways. Um, my clients, like I said, are directly across where these no parking signs would go. They would both tell you, or all three of them that are here this evening would tell you, um, that they've never had an issue backing out of the driveways whatsoever. So I don't really think that carries too much weight. Um, <clears throat> The part that it would be legal for the, the, the removal of cars, well, of course, if there's no parking signs, we, we understand that it would be legal for the police to remove, uh, to remove the signs. Um, what I would ask the board to do, um, rather than um, uh, approve what has been uh, sought here, is by way of compromise. Um, there, is a, there is a bend, which I, which I think Joe's going to talk to you about. There is a bend in the road. Um, that, the, that the no parking sign, um, the southernmost parking, no parking sign that's proposed be moved up between 40 and 50 feet um, to stop at where the bend ends. Um, the straightaway is a clear line of sight, wouldn't be any issues with pedestrians, wouldn't be any issues with backing out of driveways. Um, so I think by way of compromise, that would be a good compromise. Does anyone have any questions for me? No, no not this time. We will just hear from you tonight. We can't do a question Q&A well. Thank you very today. much for your time, gentlemen. Thank you. Sure. Is there anyone else like to speak on this? Sure. It's a name and address uh, situation when you get up there. Uh, I'm Trevally, and I'm at 29 Shore Road. Um, Why don't you pull the uh, mic down? So there you go. I could scream. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am in favor of the signs. Matter of fact, I probably initiated it. Um, I sit. My house sits up on a little cliff, and I watch the pedestrian traffic all summer long go down that staircase and when <clears throat> not all the time but when there are um, cars double parked on both sides of the road which happens a lot the people have no ability to do anything except they walk down the middle of the road um, since I've been there for two years I've never seen anyone cut through one of the paths between the homes um, because you couldn't get to a beach from the paths between the homes because there's rocks. You'd have to climb up over rocks. People travel the stairway that belonged to Oak um, Grove to get to the beach area that we have access to with a nice little boardwalk. Unfortunately, when they come off the staircase, it's 
a bend going up a hill. There's, when there's double parking, parking on <coughs> my side and parking on the other side, which there isn't that much parking on the other side, but there's people's driveways right there. <coughs> um, there isn't a room for another vehicle to come up over the crest of that hill. And people don't pay as much of attention as they used to with their cell phones and their texting and everything. And it's an accident waiting to happen. I have a video on my phone just as a little example of all the traffic, just in a two minute time frame um, one weekend. And I don't know if you're interested in seeing it, but I do have it. But even if you're pushing one of the stop signs back, it's still on a curve. If you can look at the map, you can see that it's a full curve. And if there are cars parked there at the end of the pedestrian stairway, they would have to go around, still go into the street to walk. They're still approaching that curve and it's creating blind areas. And I, I, there's baby carriages and bikes and people walking their dogs, they're not paying attention. So I am totally in favor of, um, of that, those signs being where they're designated. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else like to speak on the subject? Anyone else? Anyone else? We'll move on then. Approval of the minutes, the public hearing. Move to approve the minutes of the public hearing of April 5th, 2017. Second. Motion, second. Any corrections or comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Next. Move approval of the minutes of the regular meeting of the Board of Selectmen for April 5th, 2017. Second. And second. Any corrections and comments? And all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? And lastly, finally, move approval of the minute of the public hearing on April 19th, 2017. Thank you. Second. And it's been seconded. Comments, corrections, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Consent calendar? Move to approve the consent calendar for the meeting of May 17, 2017, in the amount of $3,393.30. Second. Okay. Any comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Terrific. We'll move into the new business part of our uh, agenda this tonight. This is the annual uh, lease agreement that the town enters with the Niantic Lions Club for their big feast, their lobster feast and art show that occurs over the 4th of July weekend. <laughs> this. this this year will actually be Friday the 30th of June, and I didn't know this till now, till Sunday the 2nd, because that, that darn holiday is falling on a Tuesday. So um, with, with no changes to the prior agreements, I'd look for a motion. Move to authorize the first selectman to enter into a lease agreement with the Niantic Lions Club and authorize the first selectman to enter into a lease agreement with the Niantic Lions Club for the purpose of selling food in connection with the art show on July 1 and 2. 2017, the town grants to the Lions for the period of 4 p.m. on Friday, June 30, 2017 through 10 p.m. on Sunday, July 2, 2017, the right to use the land at the Town Hall on Pennsylvania Avenue, which is to be set aside for that purpose by the town. Second. Yeah, it's been seconded. Any comments? It's a great event. Looking forward to it. And we thank the Lions for all they do. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Terrific. Um, Mr. Newton and Dr. Hagen are here tonight. Do you need to, are you, I know you're observing what we're doing. Is there any uh, presentation you need to make or, or explanation to the board? Um, okay. No need. Um, uh, with respect to um, the action that all the, the the actions that are needed by the Board of Selectmen to allow us to make the submission of the elementary school projects to the state of Connecticut to trigger the reimbursement uh, assessment. Um, the, um, obviously, the, the authorization of, of going forward with it um, is one that you have on your, on your agenda. The other one has to do with establishing a building committee. Um, and I see that there is a proposed um, um, resolution um, um, that's been, been drafted and uh, I apologize um, 
that. What we have done is that the Board of Ed, uh, in conjunction with Ray O'Connor, um, have adopted uh, and recommended a um, charter for the proposed building committee that would oversee the project. And that building committee is to be comprised of the town building committee and two representatives from the Board of Education with the fact that with also with representatives of the three principals and the superintendent uh, from the school district. The two Board of Ed members would be voting members. The superintendent and the three principals would not be voting members um, on, the, on the committee. Um, and in the charter, which apparently you have not gotten, have you I, got? Did you I get know it? the charter well on this subject. Oh, it, okay. it, it speaks to only the building committee, the town building committee. Um, well, there was a middle school building committee that was different. But you, please no, tell have me you, what have you, you seen the, Have you seen the charter that the Board of Ed adopted? No, you you just not, a charter of our town. No, we have not. That's, that's what I, apolo I apologize for. That's what's, <laughs> that's what's not, you do not have. So under the state statutes, a building committee has to be established. It can be the town building committee. It can be an independent building committee. It can be anything. It cannot be the Board of Ed, okay? The Board of Ed cannot Correct. establish it. Correct. But in discussions that we had with Ray O'Connor, he very much, as the chair of the town building committee, said that he would, would like to have at least two board members, Board of Ed members, on the committee uh, with the town building committee and then we had discussions so we put we put together a charter for the for the committee which then also outlined all of the um things that need to be done by the commu building committee very similar to what what is written in this but it also talks about what happens when there are um, change control change changes that are that occur in, and the process for how um, change controls are handled by uh, the dollar amount. So you obviously haven't seen that. Um, so I apologize that we haven't gotten that to you. Um, so, um, and that was in fact what was 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 acted on by the Board of Ed. So um, we're a little bit, I think we're a little, we're, we've, we've kind of dropped the ball, I think, in the, in the transfer of that information to you folks for your review. I mean, obviously. Um, There's, um, and I spoke to the attorney this week on this, that there is, uh, in our charter, it speaks to the town building committee. Yeah. And in the past, it was the adoption of a middle school town building committee, which comprises some other people. Yep. And in the past, it was a, and something else. But until we change in the ordinance in the book, or the, the rule of the book, it's the town building committee. So we may have to go back into a charter issue or an ordinance oh, I issue to change the makeup of the town building committee because that's by charter. I'll tell you now, it's defined as a town building committee. We can change the town building committee makeup mm -hmm. later. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, but we probably, and I'm not the lawyer, and the lawyer's right, not yeah, here tonight, to say, yeah. but we've gone, we've gone over this with him. Uh, I think we're going to need to do a little bit more work on the town charter side maybe an ordinance establishing the fact that for this period of time, for this specific project, yeah. the town building committee shall consist of and name it in our town charter, not just your rules charter, mm -hmm. but the, the town's charter. Do you see something different? Are you going to no, say? No, I think you said what the, the town charter supersedes the, everything. the board of ed charter. Everything. What we're trying to yeah. yeah. So we got to make sure the orange book, the town charter, um, it lines up with what you want it to line up with, okay. which is adding people onto the town committee. Yeah. Yeah. And I applaud you with that. I mean, I, um, we should get that instant feedback with people from the Board of Ed on that committee so okay. it gets done right okay. one time. Um, so so I'll, we can work, I think, I think the resolution can stand as East yes. Lime Town okay. Building Committee. Okay. We can redefine what that is okay. later by <clears throat> ordinance in the charter. Okay. Since they're not really doing the work okay. yet, All right. okay. but so. fair enough. Yeah, so that would that, that will work in terms of the, the time table for I think I that out. the no. submission. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay, and if we need to come back in time two for any any adjustment, we can always do that. Yes, yeah. and I'll work with you on that uh, ASAP. Okay, okay. So I apologize for the little bit of a, a little bit of a hiccup, but okay. I think that was that was it. So uh, we have um, three resolutions that can be read. Um, once or referred to. I think we can read them just once. 
explodes. Okay. And, yeah. And then, um, and then just do the following school facilities, and then yeah. site two and three. Site. Two. Okay. Okay. Resolved that the East Lyme Board of Selectmen authorizes the East Lyme Board of Education to apply to the Connecticut Commissioner of Education and to accept or reject grants for alterations and upgrades at the following school facilities. Niantic Center School, general renovations and alterations to the building structure that includes indoor air quality, ADA compliance, improved building security, interior building finishes, electrical, lighting and technology upgrades, and specific site and structural work to include <coughs> exterior masonry restorations, entire building window replacement, and replacement of one boiler. In addition, but not limited to a new gym floor, wall pads below the stage, portable handicap lift to the stage, and one stair incline platform lift will be included. Lily B. Haynes School, general renovations and alterations to the building structure that includes indoor air quality, ADA compliance, improved building security, interior building finishes, electrical, lighting, and technology upgrades. Specific site and structural work will include but is not limited to a reconfiguration at the front of the building for a new bus and parent drop-off, repaving of parking areas, replacing the on-site sanitary line and adding a lining to the waste lines, replacing one boiler, replacing corridor lockers with new lockers, reestablishing the second gym, and building out old locker rooms to usable classroom space. Flanders Elementary School, general renovations and alterations to the building structure that includes indoor air quality, ADA compliance, improved building security, interior building finishes, electrical, lighting, and technology upgrades, and specific site and structural work. This will include, but is not limited to, the replacement of the entire building's roof, expansion of the main office area, replacement of corridor wall partitions in the third and fourth grade wings, replacement of window blinds in the cafeteria, and replacement of wall pads in the gym. Two. Resolved that the East Lyme Board of Selectmen hereby authorizes at least the preparation of schematic drawings and outline specifications for alterations and upgrades at the school facilities outlined above. And three, resolve that the East Lyme Town Building Committee shall act as the building committee with regard to alterations and upgrades at the school facilities outlined above. Second. There are three resolutions there, okay? So the three separate resolutions, you read them as one, and we can read them as one and you can second them as one. I want to acknowledge for the record that we are voting on three resolutions. Okay? Mm -hmm. Resolve that the East Line Board of Selectmen authorizes Board of Ed to apply for the Connecticut Commission of Education and to accept or reject grants for the alterations and upgrades to the following school facilities. Resolve that the East Line Building Committee shall act as the building committee with regard to alter alterations and that the East Line Board of Selectmen hereby authorizes at least the preparation of schematic drawings and outline specifications for alterations, upgrades for the following school facilities. There are three. That was your motion. Second. There was a second uh, for all three. Are there any other comments? I want to make sure we're clear on the record on that so you don't get in trouble. So right now it's the East Lime Town Building Committee. Is Anything that we're at, talking about tonight. So as it stands, the, the building committee stands. is as it is. We can go back and change Correct. that. Okay. And I noticed that the other day, too. Yes. Um, any other questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? For clarification, can I ask one question? Um, obviously, with the state budget issues and questionable whether things will even get bonded, um, whether the, if this doesn't get approved, the, our, our big $37 million school plan, although we've gotten all the check marks and we've got already gotten the preliminary, um, the plan would obviously be to pull back and wait or wait for confirmation or, or have we? Because that question has come up already, already with the state. Because it's a possibility, uh, it's right. getting on that priority one listing right. is the goal. As right. we get on that priority, priority one listing, then um, as we know, our projects would move forward as other towns that are on that listing right. as well. Okay. So I think we've got, due to the, the scope of the work that is getting done, we've got a good shot from what we've, we've gathered of making sure we get on that priority one listing. Great. So we'll be working with the state on, on that, with the, the grants uh, division. Okay, good, good, good. And that's, yeah. that's obviously going to come up with conversations exactly. about the state. Yes. Um, thank you for the clarification. Um, thank you very much. So thank you, gentlemen. So there's, um, and on our agenda next is discussion of possible townwide smoking policy. 
Um, I don't have um, Kathy Wilson here tonight who kind of instigated this. Um, uh, this isn't something that the, um, the Council on Aging Board can adopt on its own, just maybe within their area. They have an issue with people smoking right outside the door. They have people on oxygen. They have people standing around outside the door when the windows are open and smoke is getting in. And for some of the um, our seniors, uh, it, that's an issue. It's become an issue. And um, they're asking that that we adopt and uh, maybe endorse the uh, prohibition of tobacco use at the East Lyme Community Center, not town-wide. The agenda is a little off on that, but uh, East Lyme Community Center, that they, um, as you can see, there's a 25-foot zone um, for proper disposal and, and, and lighting cigarettes, and they'd like to us uh, to con consider that for the community center area. Not all town buildings, not all town areas, just here. Um, yeah, this was in your packs. I don't know if you want to have a discussion on this tonight. If you feel comfortable with this and, and uh, endorsing this, um, uh, the Council on Aging has been working on this for a little while. As you can see, a little little work went into this, um, and it is an, it's become an issue, or they wouldn't have brought it to our attention um, up in that area. Uh, you know, I think if we just are people. My guess is people are probably just going outside to smoke, and I don't know if there's possibly an intention to cause. It's standing right under the portico. Exactly. Right next to the maybe, window. Uh, maybe have a sign posted, yeah. and, and at some point, I might not know if you have to take any action, no smoking within <coughs> X about a feet of the building. Then they know, um, especially if we're from the handicapped spots we're by the senior center or leaning into the building, if, you have to, if you're on oxygen, you're walking, or you have COPD and not on oxygen, you're walking by someone that's smoking, it could cause a it's problem. It's been an issue. And it is becoming an issue. So I think there has to be some type of a, a buffer zone to make sure that in the area where people would be parking and having to walk through there, and if you're under the portico, you open and close the door and it's wind that gets sucked right into that's the building. Been an issue. And I'm sure that's an issue too. So I'd have no problem, you know, letting, you know. They, they also try to open the front windows. They get a nice, they try not to put the air conditioning on until they need to. Um, you know, we're a seashore town, we get nice sea breezes, mm -hmm. but they can't people sit on the front benches and smoke um, I'm the last person's trying to get more government involvement on things like this I don't like to see this kind of stuff but when I also hear that it's an issue and they're having trouble just asking people to move because then it becomes people don't um, so I would think posting a sign near the entrance to the senior uh, yeah, center or having a says, rule to refer to yeah a rule that says no parking uh, no parking uh, no, no. no smoking no smoking within X amount of feet of the thing, or, or, or unless in designated areas, and then cite where that designated area would be. Other comments? We're not. This is not an ordinance. It's not an this ordinance. Is just, it's just it's a, a rule of the building. It's a rule of the building. They're asking for us yep. to approve a policy on the rule of the building. Rule of the building. Is that correct? Yeah. Which ultimately lands with us. Yeah. Do we have any similar um, rules for other buildings? Well, we have rules not to smoke in uh, in the public parks. Uh, that might be an ordinance, or it might be a rule of the Parks and Rec. We have an ordinance to find, but it's their rule not to smoke on the beach. I, th I believe. Yeah, I think it's on the beach. I don't know. Um, if it's in the and I think park. it's their rule, and we we enforce it with an ordinance, but uh, of of the fines, but not necessarily the rule. Yep. You remember, it's their it's their the rule. It's their rules. But I don't know of any others, frankly. Is this a problem this anywhere else, or is it just a community to. center? I mean, the schools probably have their own. Oh, I'm sure. No, they well, you're not, on you're not allowed to smoke. They have a smoke there's, a, there's a statute that says you can't smoke anywhere on school property, period. Correct. Um, but that doesn't apply Who to... Who holds that rule? Is that on the Board of Ed, or the town owns the building? Oh, it's a state statute. It's a, so the state. state covers us on that? State. All right. Any comments, uh, Mr. Cunningham? Any thoughts? Uh, not at the moment. Okay. But you never know. Want to dig in a little bit more and, and push this to our next meeting where we can uh, ask some questions, go up there and observe? I would like to. It's not supposed to start until July 1st anyway, so we have another meeting. Well, the thing that's kind of new. Several meetings. The thing that's kind of new and unique as I read this is the e cigarettes. Along with, we already know the tobacco, and I, I understand exactly their place. Mm -hmm. And I 
Mm -hmm. I had no problem with that. And I don't necessarily have a problem with the e-cigarettes. It's just, it's just a new, it's kind of a new thing. Which we probably don't have a regulation on the beaches for that, the e-cigarettes. Right. No. Yeah, this is, uh, we're going to keep this just to the community yep. center tonight yep. and uh, let the parks and rec control their beaches and their yep. parks. Um, I'll be up there Friday. I could take a look around and talk to Kathy and about it a, a little bit and then ask Kathy to come back. We'll co work out some type of uh, verbiage for uh, policy to adopt at the next meeting, something. Uh, the next meeting is the beginning of June. They'll leave them plenty of time to post the notice and and all that so right. we could wait to the next meeting if it's your pleasure if it's your pleasure yeah yeah so I, well, I do have a question yes just a clarification so um you know the, the discussion item is a town-wide policy but it looks like they're just asking for a, a very limited policy for that building so yes as really i describe aptly is it really a town-wide policy that we're it's not a town-wide policy right um so we so well it's Kathy asking if we want one or not, but this specific request was for the community center. The rules are written up as for the community center. We could always adapt this later for other buildings <coughs> in town. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. If, we, if we're not having problems with building, we, I don't. I think we could, you know, if we have to adopt more policies later on, fine. Something. But I don't think there's any problem here at town hall, or I haven't heard of any problems I anywhere any else. Complaints. Any complaints? So that's probably that's probably overkill a town wide policy mm -hmm. and. And I guess the question is, um, who who has control of that building? Who has the authority to regulate the the uh, policies of the building itself? Well, the good the question, way, right? And we don't know. The the so the Commission on Aging did a whole lot of work on this mm -hmm. and is trying to adopt it, but they don't really control the building we do, and that's why it's coming to us. Yeah. So they're making this suggestion and this plea for our um, adaptation. Uh, adoption of this um, but you're right it's a town building she has uh, done the work with all the other um, department heads in that building so Dave Mike uh, registrars um, uh, the, the library and they all concur so I think it makes sense to table this so we can think through the best way questions. to mm. yeah okay. Okay. The and for the next and there's one last question: Who who is the enforcement of that? Is it, is it the police? That, well, the no enforcement. Right? So you know, I think in most cases, <coughs> if you ask, you know, someone, can you please Agreed. move? That's not going to be a problem. If it becomes a problem, you could always contact. You know, Kathy could talk to uh, the police department, see how they'd like to handle it as well. Okay. Right now, it's not an ordinance, so it's not a police uh -huh. matter. That's what I'm thinking. Right. Yep. It's not a fine. It's not a police matter. We right. don't, I'm trying not to escalate this. I'm trying to just make it a rule that Agreed. people will just um, agree to. Yep. And we have a rule to point to and maybe a designated area that people can go to. Um, we wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't an issue with some of the seniors that do frequent the building, um, which is a lot. I mean, that's a very... Yep. So that's it's very issue. understandable. I mean, you yeah. have people on oxygen and that, yeah. that are have compromised... Yep. Uh, uh, breathing situations, and uh, I can see where this would be very objectionable to them. The question is, how do we do it in a way that isn't overbearing? And the other issue is the the longer portico um, going yeah. to the library area, where people on a rainy day legitimately would want to hang out there and smoke. Yeah. Um, and the children's museum, you know, flow is pretty pretty heavy in the afternoon all, all day long. So, children's library not yeah. museum. So, okay, we'll table this to another day. Discussion and possible action on the public works request um, to put no parking signs, no grove. Um, um, we heard some testimony. Appreciate that. We I will allow the. Uh, uh, you, you, wait, 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 you, you jump. You jump. You skip skip the, the powerhouse account. I always the, skip. Yeah. <laughs> well, so we get a lot done, Mark. So we'll get back to that. Well, I'll, I'll do it real quick then. Move to approve an expenditure of one thousand five hundred and thirty-five dollars from the powerhouse account to supplement the purchase of the new senior center vehicle that is being procured through the Department of Transportation 5310 grant process. Second. Motion, second. Any comments? No. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? It's a 4-0. Um, 
We'll open that next uh, discussion up. Joe, um, you heard some testimony. I, I was going to say I'll allow the uh, selectmen to ask any questions necessary to form an opinion from people that have given testimony as well and might be experts in the uh, neighborhood. Um, and of course, one would be Joe, our, our uh, public works director. Mr. Bergaw. Yeah, for the Tell record, me what's Joe going Bergaw, on. I'm the director of public works. Um, so, just one of the things that comes across our office is people have parking, you know, they want to um, restrict parking in front of their house or things going on. The reason I bring that up is that uh, I don't feel it's uh, the public works directors or some of that. The, the town is, uh, is designated, the Board of Selectmen is a legal traffic authority. When you're going to restrict right. parking in town, the best way to do it is through the legal traffic authority, which is the Board of Selectmen on the legal traffic authority representative. So that's why we're here today, and it gives people a public process. That's just so we know why we're here. So with that being said, I did get a complaint about a concern for um, um, to restrict some parking because of a safety issue. This happened last fall. Um, the person that actually said, <coughs> the person that actually brought it up was Patty Trevelia at 29 Shore Road, who has spoken tonight is here. So um, when that happened, I went out there as in the best um, nature to try to find out and, cor and come up with a proposal um, to correct the solution because before we bring it in front of the board I sent a letter to all the neighbors there of a possible solution to uh, limit parking but um, I thought it was a good process because everyone didn't want it and I got all the letters and the feedback so I didn't have to bring it in front of this board um, and at that point this was last September September 2016 I kicked the matter back to the Oak, uh, Oak Road Beach Association I talked to the president and I talk to some members and I basically said you have a concerned resident you have some some issues with parking down there I says I'd like you guys to address it at your board meeting and if you have any recommendations for the town of what you would like to see as a beach association you can they're not the governing board by any stretch of imagination but they they that's their their charges their residents so they did take it up at their meeting I believe it was a September meeting um, I did um, and they came um, they had Mrs. Trevelia at the uh, meeting and they came up with a recommendation of what they were looking for. It was different from the one. So this was like October. That's that. Um, the, what's written up by Mr. Weaver, the president of the Oak Grove Beach Association, is in your packet. Um, it's October, November. There's not really parking issues in the beach areas in the winter. So now we're now we're here in front of you. So um, just kind of where where we're at um, with that is, and some of the things that I'll kind of reiterate in the um, in the. Uh, in the letter or in the email from um, from the uh, president of Oak Grove is it does appear that there so I was trying to sift through the um, based on the recommendation from the Oak Grove Beach Association president I was trying to then take that see if that's something that would work and so we came up with a um, restriction of, or um, no parking within these signs on the um, west side of the road which is the non water side of the road Be and the reason being is to try because um, there is a right of way that people come across, um, come through from the backside, like man wearing. They come through, and as the attorney that spoke before, um, people are supposed to cut through. There's a right of way to the beach. Not a lot of them do. They go down the um, down the road. Um, the, the, what we tried to identify in the area, the no parking um, designation, was an area that if people are parking on the edge of the road on a, on the inside of a curve, that it, it kind of only leaves people to. To walk in down the middle of the road in a curve as a car is coming around in the summer and so it seems to be a safety issue um, they identified the five reasons um, that they feel I know the attorney that spoke before in delegations has spoken um, what I'm looking at as a uh, legal traffic authority rep and in, in saying to this board is we're, I'm, we're trying as best we can to make it as safe as possible in that neighborhood with a recommendation from the Oak Road Beach Association so um, I'd be, um, if you are willing to take comment or, or however that works, I mean, if it does, um, moving the signage on the south end up a little bit in the straightaway is something that works better with the neighbors to, so it doesn't restrict parking but makes it, still makes it safer than it is, it's something that I think we could look at. Um, the other thing is that I don't think anyone disputes, when I say the north and the south, that the, the north end, I don't believe anyone disputes putting a no parking sign on the north side, it's how far down on the south side, because you know every every 22 feet you restrict a uh, you restrict a um, parallel parking spot. So um, you know we could put the no parking sign on the north side, move it up from the recommendation about 40 feet, which would be about two spots to the north as a, as a suggestion. 
put that sign in and then kick it back to the Oak Grove uh, Beach Association to monitor and tell us and let them have, you know, advertise it and at their meeting to, um, that they can discuss it. And if they like to see it move even farther down, it's not a big deal for the highways department to pick that sign up and move that down and be the same side. I think that might be the best way to try to address a safety issue without, you know, sweeping it under the rug, but also to go the whole length um, is something that does limit the parking of the people down there, which in beach associations, there's not a lot of. And just, just the one last comment is that this only addresses about 160 feet. The only reason we're talking about this area is a lot of times in beach areas, and especially on Shore Road, you can't park a car on the side of the road because there's landscaping and there's other items on the edge of the road. The, the thing that's actually fortunate about this area, there's a lot of area on the edge of the road, so it gives a perception that you could use that all for parking, but there's, there's private property and then there's a curve there, so we're, try, we're trying to meet all goals. So uh, that's all I have to say. Uh, I know there's kind of a point and counterpoint with neighbors here, however the thing, but as a legal traffic authority, um, you know, we are coming up on the summer. We could do as I recommended, as of putting putting at the north end, putting, moving up about 40, 50 feet on the south side, or 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 the commission could vote on the current proposal, or we could just kick it back to the beach association for their recommendation. Though that's that's where I stand with this right now. Well, thank you, Joe, for the update, and I think you were trying to find a compromise um, on this. But frankly, we don't want to get into the neighborhood. My opinion four up here um, we're getting a recommendation from the Oak Grove Board of Directors Correct. who know their neighborhood and think I would think are working in representing everyone and trying to make decisions based on everyone's behalf uh, in their neighborhood and that's why they're there um, yes with the traffic authority I do see I think you've well documented the curve and the road and the issues and I think they have too you're trying to find a compromise by maybe giving a couple spaces back, especially in a crowded beach community. I wonder if we should kick this back to the Oak Grove Board of Directors based on your amended proposal, which is move the sign down and create uh, some parking in the straightaway. My only concern is that if it's identified as a safety reason and it's a curve and we kick it back to them to just move it yep. up a little bit, then if anything ever happens on that curve in the summertime, because the problem is with beach associations, as I, I live in one, is, you know, when's the next meeting? Um, you know, it could be in June, and then it gets back to here in July, right. and all of a sudden something happens. The, what I talked about, is, it doesn't appear to be, from what I understand, any disagreement about the sign on the northerly side. If you go right. to the minimum distance on the southerly side, you could always kick it back to the Oak Grove Beach Association to extend it even farther but that, then you address the curve issue so that no one gets whacked on the curve walking down the Miller Road because you can't see around. That's just my thought is because if we do kick okay. it back and do nothing, then we now kind of have a safety concern that we didn't address right in the middle of summer. Right. That was already brought to uh, traffic authorities' right. attention. And all we're trying to do is, is balance the s safety, more importantly, but the fact of it is limited in parking down there. That, that's just my recommendation is that this board does um, – move to approve I do have a rec I mean a, a, a motion but but based on the um, revised recommendation of moving it up about 40 feet um, to a point that we we you can get around the curve with seeing around it and then that's straight away and then kick it to the Board of Governors well, I can kick it up I can work with the Board of Governors to yeah. see if it needs to be extended that that's where I would okay recommend. that's by, based on your expert <laughs> sorry I shouldn't put those words in your mouth but uh, your your authority well, and your expertise addressing the safety concern while also understanding that the, the sensitivity of of um, limiting parking in any area, especially a beach area. Okay. Tom, a couple of questions. Um, my understanding concerns: Are we disadvantaging any people or properties by doing this? It depends who you talk to. I mean, if we go with the full length, then it limits the parking in that area, and one of the areas that people would be, I believe, are, are here tonight. And, and that's why, um, before the meeting, I su they suggested they talk under delegations to have an opportunity to right. say something. So, yes, to answer your question, it would be limiting the parking, the parking, but we're always going to err on the side of safety over parking. However, this is a, rec this is a kind of a, 
um, some kind of a, work, a kind of a compromise, as even the attorney suggested, that you um, you uh, limit the parking on any time you have an inside curve. You oh, don't like you don't like parking on yeah, an inside bad. curve because you can't see around it. And if you have someone, uh, God forbid, it's walking a stroller in the middle of the road, mm -hmm. and someone's coming from the north to the south over that hill and come around the corner, if you don't have, if you don't limit the parking there and someone's parked, as Ms. Trevelia said, on both sides of the road and s someone has nowhere to go, um, that's why there, I would support some limitation of parking there. Do you know who, who's parking there? Are they visitors or are they I'm owners? Assu I'm assuming they're, I don't live there, I'm assuming they're guests of the people because it's not, okay. this is not a, so you know, it's not an they, everyday they, they were, they were people correct, people there? aren't, people from out of town aren't coming to Oak Road to park there that's this is this is the, this is the residents or their or their um their guests Your guess i'm just wondering if it's used regularly or if it's this is like well, the summer time this is well, a problem from from mid-june to it's jamming to, to it's the summer it's season it's very, probably more uh, weekends uh but it's 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 the life of a beach association that's what happens down there they, they come down there people visit they have people they have the right to have people down there but it's limited parking and in this case, we're just trying to make sure it's as safe as possible for the people walking, but also not limiting someone's opportunity to have their guest park. Um, can they park in front of the stairs? I see we no, want to put your signs. That's no parking, too. So, that's, yeah, so yeah. that really clears out the whole area. Um, okay. Are there any it, homes there that don't have uh, pa parking access at the properties? Like driveways? Like, well, every, yeah, are, every, there, are there homes down there? I'm looking at the There's uh, not Google a lot of places map. to park down there because, I mean, you're, most But driveways. it looks like every house has a parking space. Every yard has a place to park. Well, someone parks on the, on the water side of Shore the, Road. The there's no specific designation that they can't park there. The problem is there's more driveways on the shore side yeah, I see than that. The, on, the, on, the, on right. the landward side just because that's where the houses are. So you're not allowed to park in front of someone's driveway, of course. nor you don't want to have someone park two feet off the edge of it. So, uh, but it is more ideal for them to park on the shore side because then if anyone's coming, the sight line is perfectly clear around the inside of the curve of an oncoming car. There was one house on the westerly side, looks like it's small, small lot. Does that have a driveway? That, That's right. The, the, the little box yeah thing, that that's actually mrs trevelia's lot that's that's on two elevations she lives up on a hill and that's on the bottom of the hill but there's no house there there's no it house. turns out it didn't come no out that good yeah no okay but that that is her her property and there's no yeah there's no structure on it yeah i it does concern me very much with the curve there because here again someone especially if there's a lot of traffic there's enough distractions to people driving right now and if there's someone in the road or something like that I mean even if they're not supposed to be there you don't want to see something bad happen for any reason at all um, how, now Joe you ha you said you have something now uh, that would be a little different from the proposal we have right now yeah um, so um, what my suggestion is based on talking to one of the parties is I mean because th there is a big concern of loss of parking is on this map, the aerial map that you have. Yeah. Yeah. When I say that, when I say the north, the north of where you're, the, is this, is this, is this side? Uh -huh. Is bringing this side, because it looks like the road is somewhat straight there. It starts going into a curve a little farther down. The, the whole, this map is a one inch or 60 feet. Right. So the whole length of this looks like mm. about 150 feet, give or take maybe a little less than that. So if you go up to the north about 40 feet, you're, you're still in the straightaway, 40 feet, 45 feet or so, is two car, is two park, parking yeah. spots, because your parking spot is 22, 22 feet. feet. And so you can put back two parking spots, but you're still not at the, the, the curvature there. So then the rest of the area, which is about 80 or 90 feet, would be in, in the curve. Which so you lo you're losing about four parking spots yeah, according to the revised plan? As yes. Okay. So I. I have a, the, the picture mm -hmm. we have, is this the revised plan? No, or it's, it's, it's the not, because the process is, when I sent this out, I sent a letter to the re everyone on Shore Road from um, South Drive all the way to Man Waring, and I told them that this meeting was happening tonight, and this came about in talking to um, the residents tonight, um, that there was a, 
um, very much of a concern of loss of parking, but I read it is that they, they, they understand they understand the fact of the north parking sign and they understand the, the safety as far as the curb. It's just that there appears to be an area that's a straightaway there. That, and if they could get back a little bit of the parking there, which, you know, in a beach area you need all you can get, would be the kind of the resolution. Now, I, I, I can't emphasize enough that once you sink that sign in the south end, at least we've covered our safety issue and we could kick, as I say, kick it back to the board so they could have their full public process of discussing it of if it needs to be extended farther to the south for safety reasons. But as far as I'm concerned, for, as a public works director, we've addressed the major concern of being on a curve. Um, and, and then we could get a different recommendation um, if, the, if the Board of Governors happens to, Oak Grove Beach Association Board of Governors happens to um, weigh in on that. But at least we can have some signage up there to protect the obvious interests that every, no one disagrees with is that there is a concern as you come around that curve that you can't see someone walking in the middle of the road because there's no sidewalks down there. No. So is your proposal uh, two signs? My proposal is to, to is is a parking area. The northerly oh. thing is designated exactly where it is. There, it's going to be just the north just the south of Mrs. Space. Trevelyan's driveway. Yeah. And then the southerly line, instead of being by the right of way, is is pull it up about 40 feet. Okay. Just before just before the curve. And then I would kick it to the Oak, Re Oak Grove Beach Association to discuss if they would if they would recommend it extended and they could invite all their neighbors to discuss it in the format that a beach association does it. And if they want to make a recommendation to us to then go all the way back to the to the right away, then then they can do that. And then in time, then if it's so be it, we we could we could kick it down another 40 feet. I don't even think at that point is I mean my own opinion. I think as a legal traffic a rep, I could we could move it down, but this board has already, the whole purpose is, is to give the public the opportunity as you as the legal traffic authority to speak their piece. Well, they've already had a chance to speak their piece and they will be able to talk to the Oak Grove Beach Association before and to see what that recommendation is. That's why. Well, and Joe, you're recommending based on your position and your training expertise in the field that something needs to be done and you've come up with something that you feel would satisfy that right now with your amended uh, that, uh, that's, uh, motion. That's, that's correct. Okay, thank you. That's all. Right. That's, I'm comfortable with that. I'm okay with the amended one. Um, if, if we're going to do any more, then I want to get down there and see that. But I know that area a little bit. But could we get more of a definition if you're asking us to prove something tonight? What? what well, what? You, you said you have an amend. You have a motion for us, right? Well, I have a yeah. I have a motion. Okay. Um, Because we have one as well, but we can always amend that. This is, this is what I put together. I, I didn't make a change, but I came up with So this, uh, the, your amendment effectively looks like remove six, spa three spaces? Yeah. Two. Two. Uh, to remove three? It, it looks like it's going to remove, the, looks the, like the, about 60 feet. The amendment is to, is to move the southerly sign up about approximately 45 feet from as almost to that line of the other that, that square property give or, give or, give or take wherever yeah. 45 feet because that's boxes. two more parking spaces and and, and to make sure it's before, that too the, far before north? the curve was that just too far north I mean, people come down the stairs and then they take a left to get to the beach access so they are walking on the road and we're trying to keep them off the road especially as they're approaching the corner um, the, the only thing so they got to go outside of the cars but the to cars, go, but and by, the, by the time people are coming up and around the turn, they're they're slamming the brakes if they're not paying attention, and they're catching people on the road. And that that was the testimony I heard. That's my concern. I'm trying to find a compromise, and but but um, throwing two cars on the side of the road as people are coming down the the hill from the stairs. I would imagine it's not just one or two families um, that come down the hill, and then the, the, it looks like the access is back up north. And if they have to do that, they have to get into the road around cars and then back off into the shoulder. Correct. Ex except that when someone's coming around that corner, they're going to have much better sight line. Because when you come around, when you come from the north to south, you're actually coming on a hill and you're coming around, you'll be able to see those people better. I'm not seeing that. Yeah, it's when. Um, you're going to move. You're going to move. <laughs> You're going to move this sign. 
this side so down they here. Come, some of the coming from the north here is higher up, and they're coming around. Some oh, I see. Right well, here, they're going to have better sight, and this is a straightaway. If it's a I sedan mean, and not a big uh, Tahoe, well, the, the, other thing the kids hide behind. The other thing the board can do is to go as recommended, or recommended, and, and, they and, and have the whole thing, and then and then reassess it later. I just want to address the safety concerns. Joe, would you? Re it looks like there's area for the cars to pull off the road a little bit, and it's on town property. Would you? Would we rather have the cars doing that, or would you rather have the cars closer to the street? And I'd rather have them off the road. So you'd rather have them off the road, which then takes away that right away for walking, right? Yes. Yeah. So my question is, you would rather have them off the road onto there than put well, them on the road and put. We don't have put markers so we people can sidewalks. walk on the other side of these we cars. We don't have sidewalks. sidewalks so you can't really I know we don't have sidewalks, but it's not our land. No, no, the town owns quite a bit the of that. The town owns about, well, at the right of way, the town owns <coughs> probably about five, six feet, and then it opens up probably to about 15. Right, but if we put take. reflectors or something so that maintain three feet from the property line so people can walk, would that alleviate some of this and ensure if people, pe people can walk between the cars and the hill? If we start getting yeah. into that degree, I would kick it to the Oak Grove Beach Association to recommend that's their neighborhood, that's where these people live. They can pay um, for it. Then, because I don't know if you can really direct people in that manner and they would follow that. I just want to, so people aren't coming out in the road and walking down the middle of the road and you can't see them coming around the curb. We're satisfying, in your opinion, the safety issue if we move the signs back up north 40 feet, give the, t give the two spaces there. Um, and see how that looks and how that is and how the Oak Grove be uh, and then the kick it to Oak Grove. and then if there's more of a safety issue then move it all the way that then we'll move it back at a later time because it's all about safety by this authority correct yeah you know, and they they might have other issues okay I'll uh, make a motion and move to approve the installation of two no parking signs on the west side of Shore Road in Oak Grove Beach Association as proposed by Public Works Director at the May 17, 2017 Board of Selectmen meeting and for the reasons identified in the President of Oak Grove Beach Association's email dated October 12, 2016, which is included in the supporting documentation. So that would be obviously with Joe's proposal tonight. And yeah. Is there a second? Okay. The question is that the amended, or is that what's being proposed? That's what I'm this, proposing. What's in this document? The full? No, that's not. No. Joe's testimony is to move to amend this to go uh, 40 feet north to allow for. Two I know. I, didn't, I just didn't the, hear that in the. The, motion. the only thing in this no, thing is I said motion approved. By him at the I would change tonight. one word in here. Mo motion to approve the, the installation of the two no parks on the west side of. And instead of the as proposed, then say as amended, and that will cover what we discussed. Yeah, I okay. Just, I just want the okay, motion I'll, to be more. So I'll do it as amended by the public works director at the meeting of part of select meeting of uh, May 17, 2017. I'll second that. Okay. okay. So as amended, we'll see how that goes. Go back to the board of mm. governors, governors if they I'll kick feel it that's them. not adequate enough, mm. and we'll look at the same. We'll have to eyeball it too. Um, any comments? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Abstain? That's a unanimous decision at this point. Okay. So, thank you, Joe. Thank you for your help thank on you. this. Thank, thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you for coming and speaking to us. Banners on uh, signs on lamp posts. If I haven't skipped any, that's next. That has been uh, removed from our agenda this evening. Okay. If you had a big um, uh, monologue on, on that issue and you prepared something, I'll allow you to speak on it, but apparently it's not no longer being proposed by the Zoning Commission. I'll put that notebook away. To strike. <laughs> I bet you did. Yeah, work. I bet you did. Uh, they've asked us to strike that from their agenda. Okay. Moving on, then I'll and move to enter into executive session for the purpose of discussing personnel slash contract negotiation issue. Great. Second. So we will go to uh, we have my to, office. You have to for, call the vote first. All, all in favor say aye. 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 So we'll go into executive session. We'll go to my office. Look you over the. Tell me you can't do this at the end of the meeting. Not
Mr. Nelson, I'm back in public. I'll move to come out of executive session with no action taken. Second. Any comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Terrific. So um, we generally go over contract um, negotiations and executive session. We come out and we generally vote on them. Uh, so we'll take a motion to uh, uh, for the uh, local 3377 International Association of Firefighters uh, contract okay. uh, for it's, uh, that begins in July. Move to authorize the first selectman to enter into collective bargaining agreement between the Town of East Lyme and local 3377 of the International Association of Firefighters for the period from July 1st, 2015 through June 30, 2018. Second. Second. Any uh, comments? I'll give a brief description of and the... It's an extension per year, too. It's, it's a one-year extension. Extension, which is why. Uh, the firefighters will receive a 2.5% pay increase, which is pretty standard in the state of Connecticut through arbitration, so we are, uh, we're settling that quickly. This one-year extension also adds uh, two... Uh, it adds one step into their rate of pay. So what was a one-year probationary step and then immediately after one year, they would get full pay. Now a new firefighter come in would get that probationary pay. Incidentally, this next year, there'll be no increase, no 2.5%, but nobody falls in that qualification either. Um, then a new firefighter will go into a two to f two, year two to year five uh, uh, secondary probationary period, uh, so a, a, a second step. Before, uh, they would go right to the pay that all these career guys were getting, uh, now they'll have to take a, a second step before they reach that level. So it was a nice compromise that uh, the firefighter uh, group, um, who are all town citizens, every single one of them, all seven of them, um, who live here, pay taxes here, raise their kids here, and, and fight our fires and save our lives here. Um, they know, and they're, they're part of this, this, this town, and uh, we really appreciate the uh, very good relationship we have with them. Um, so this is a good contract by the town and good good contract by them. So I'll call the vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Commission board resignations. Um, very sorry to see that the resignation <coughs> of Norm Bender has hit our desk. He's a full voting member of, on the Inland Wetlands Agency. And he has tended his resignation, and also the resignation of Maggie Prokop, uh, a long-serving member in our town. She's an alternate member on the Historic Properties Commission. She has tendered her resignation, and I wish them both well and thank them um, with great gratitude for their service to the town. I, I know Maggie has been active longer than I can possibly remember. Same thing with Norm. They yeah, both have. No kidding done yeoman service to this town and it, 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 I don't know if you've already done it but a nice thank you from you. Oh, for we always there. do. I'm sure. Always do. Okay, great. The issue on the temporary tower is one that we're putting in a temporary communications tower in our town while we we'll get the uh, permanent one installed which was already approved and we're working on but that's a one year plus you a one year uh, process. Well, we're going independent police and we have pockets of uh, uh, a town in uh, uh, the north part of town without radio coverage that's not just for our police that's for public works that's for bur people in bur bur burning buildings or EMT services so we want to fill those pockets with a temporary tower that will exist over at the solar farm more than likely so um, I need an authorization to go into a zero cost contract um, with one of these locations Okay, resolved to authorize the first selectman to take such actions as may be necessary or desirable to establish and maintain temporary municipal communications facilities at a suitable site pending the completion of the planned permanent communications facility at the Mostowy Road site. Further resolved that the first selectman is authorized to execute and deliver such documents as may be necessary or desirable to establish and maintain such temporary communications facilities. Second. Motion and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? There's no old business. There's no communications. Information and reports are blank tonight. So ex officio reports. We can go down the line, just fill in some some areas. 
the planning commission canceled the meeting. I attended my first library commission meeting. It was actually a very efficient 30 minute meeting. Uh, it was interesting. There was all, not a lot of action was taken. There was some talk about state cutbacks and, and such, and they were uh, pleased that they got some of their money back reinstated by the Board of uh, Finance. Um, I was not able to go to the Board Ed because the meeting was pushed up from 7 to 6 because to it's because there was the uh, town meeting. Yeah, somebody covered for you. And uh, Kevin covered. Uh, tomorrow, the building committee will host its first meeting in probably five or ten years. Uh, about three. Three? Yes. Okay, then it's, since I've been on here, they yeah. haven't met. It's been my easiest exhibition duty. But they are meeting tomorrow um, now that we have authorized them to take over the school project. Okay, and I'll speak to Ray tomorrow, Mr. O'Connor, the, um, the chair, about <coughs> who can vote until we've changed the rules on that. Okay. So I'll get we'll on see that. you tomorrow. It's at 7. Terrific. I think it's a police commission meeting tomorrow as well. I'll give him a call. I won't be able to be there. Mr. Mr. Siri. We had a uh, youth coalition meeting last week, too, uh, with the uh, graduation season coming up. They're uh, working with Legislite. They're coming up with some... Uh, uh, Things to put at tables and stickers to put out, warning parents, you know, about hosting uh, alcohol parties and that they could be responsible and make sure they don't, and also to ensure that their children, you know, stay safe during the uh, graduation season and so forth like that. Um, I know a couple members from Ledge Light have been going around town asking restaurants to be able to place these out in a conspicuous place, and all that they've gone to have said yes. Uh, then Youth Services followed that meeting. They had nine applicants for uh, three scholarships this year for Jeffrey Borges, who you know tragically perished in Salem uh, back in 2012. Uh, they have uh, this year three $1,500 scholarships they were able to uh, award uh, to people either going into uh, education to work with children or into working with animals. So that was it. And then we had uh, Parks and Rec. Uh, just you know went over the upcoming. Uh, uh, season at the beaches. Uh, they discussed the ordinance for the dogs uh, and also um, that the uh, band shell opens a week from Friday night. Uh, that's the extent of my, and that the uh, meeting I covered for Markwood Board of uh, Ed was just very brief because they were going to the uh, uh, town meeting as well. That's my report. Terrific. Terrific. The great Mr. Cunningham. I actually have nothing to I, I uh, unfortunately missed the uh, meeting that I was to attend because of a personal conflict. So no report this week. Well, you have some good news about a daughter graduating, I believe. Mary? Yep, I have my daughter Mary's graduating uh, Monday, and uh, so we're excited about that. <laughs> She'll be a nurse practitioner. She will. She'll be an APRN, and uh, hopefully. Okay. Stellar. Stellar. Proud daddy. Proud yeah. papa. Hey, uh, pretty busy around town I'll give a quick uh, report and run down uh, the schedule and things that are happening in town uh, Chamber of Commerce hosted a state of the state of East Lyme um, on Tuesday the 9th and we had many business owners come out I think about 50 60 people came out to hear about uh, what was going on in the town and answer uh, ask questions and get some answers um, at uh, on the 10th the very next day we had a, a the health and safety committee put on uh, the health and safety day so all town employees come in and, and, and get brought up to speed on safety issues. Uh, it makes us compliant with our insurance. We get discounts because of that. And, and also, um, you know, OSHA requirements. They have to take certain uh, safety classes. Um, we also, uh, I was a guest at the Rotary Club, uh, Niantic Rotary. They also had their gala uh, a couple weeks ago where they raise money. And, of course, they always are giving it back into the community. There's many, many, many examples of that. I went up to the, to the State House and, and um, spoke at the Town Leaders Day on the 11th. Uh, cost, the, the Connecticut um, a small town group got together. We met uh, with uh, Themis and, um, and um, uh, Len, Len Fasano and um, uh, Rep A to Z, as he's known, Joe A to Z, um, talking about the budget. And it was just after the poor revenue numbers came out from the state. Um, very, very concerned about that. I'll speak to that at the very end here. Um, we're working on, with Old Lyme. We're going to get mandated by the state to accept Old Lyme's um, uh, waste water and be, uh, con convey that to Waterford, which will then bring it over to the New London plant. 
Uh, we are in discussions with them on how that will work. Uh, again, that will be a court order that we will be forced to do that, but we're doing the preliminary work now. I met with the Oswegatchi uh, Save the River, Save the Hills group. Um, no, I'm sorry, the, the Oswegatchi Nature Preserve group, and there is a distinct difference. Uh, we, there was a PTSD presentation at the high school. I was able to attend the beginning of that as I had another meeting, but um, uh, very, very well attended, and uh, kudos to Nicole who put that on. She's a senior at the high school, and um, uh, very moving um, presentation. Uh, at Home of Wall Beach yesterday was the third graders. Uh, if you ever had third graders in town the last couple of years, I saw your daughter. You saw my daughter. She gave me a high five. I knew I, I knew that I saw your face. <laughs> Home of, all the third graders in town go to the Home of the Wall Beach for the day. They learn about environmental science and the things that are going on down there. It's um, quite a quite a place down there if you actually stop and read the plaques and understand how the storm water is handled from this uh, this side of town. I attended the Coast Guard graduation today and represented the, the, the town there. And um, tomorrow's budget referendum day. It's easy to forget these days with these automatic budgets um, uh, referendums. But the 18th, so 8 o'clock a.m. to 8 o'clock p.m., at the Town East Lime Community Center. Go check out our new parking lot. It's not quite finished yet, but we took out all the big planters in the middle so you could actually fit your car in the space and um, go, go vote. Uh, town referendum day is tomorrow. Um, on Sunday will be a candlelight vi vigil uh, on the 20, I'm skipping ahead a week, I'm sorry. Um, the opening of the band shell is the 26th and you mentioned that and that'll be at uh, uh, 6 p.m. And what a great addition. That's almost exactly a year after we cut the ribbon on the new boardwalk uh, with celebration. And now we're celebrating another thing in town, which is the band shell donated, donated mostly by the um, Niantic Rotary Club, the Lions, the East Line Public Trust, and a little bit of town money. The 28th will be a candlelight visual to the salute to the armed forces in our town. And the Memorial Day Parade is on the 29th at 1 o'clock p.m. We're still waiting for numbers from the state. Um, the hole is very deep up in Hartford. There is a, a, tr uh, a discussion now from the Democrat side to, to actually implement some cuts to the town. It worries me. We have, um, um, we're standing by. We'll open up the budget discussions again should we get cut, and we'll make cuts to town services uh, that will affect quality of life here. We'll make cuts to education and we will have a supplemental tax increase if necessary. We hope not to. We certainly hope not to. Um, but um, what looked like we would be getting out of that and out of that problem because everything coming from the state was we're not going to have the teacher pension issue and we're not going to change the ECS formula has now reverted to yes we might. So what was a $7 million cut by the governor is now a $9 million cut. He actually got worse. But again, that's all talk. Every representative in the room said that's dead on arrival again. But what remains to be seen is an actual budget from the state. We will do our work when they do theirs. I'll, uh, hey, Mark, who, who, who pays for the sewer connection if, if uh, we have to hook up the old line? Is that the state? Old, uh, old line. Old line pays for it. They'll be re us. They reimburse us for, for there's a yeah. buy-in. If it has there's to go into our town, they're going to pay to bring it to our hookup. There'll be a buy-in for, for the system we already have. There'll be uh, <laughs> a, a payment for upgrade of a, a pump station that will have to be upgraded to accept their sewer. There will be uh, depreciation costs involved. There will be capital costs that if there's ever a capital issue with the town, there will be a buy-in on that as well. Uh, and all these things are being worked out. Yeah. And we're entitled to fair compensation and not have our ratepayers uh, incur their expenses. Yeah. And there's no, you know, we've been ta talking for a year, but we're getting closer and closer. I'll let, uh, we'll go back to public comment, and then I have a few responses for, for Mr. Rando. Mr. Rando, East Lime. Looking up to Old Lyme, how does that affect uh, the sewer consumption? What does that leave us? What's going to be left for us if we need some? 
to hook something else up in town. I'll answer that at the end. What? I'll answer that when I, when I can. Okay, thank you. Um, how many accidents have we had down there in, uh, where we're trying to put them stop signs in? Has there been a lot of accidents down there? Yes. I can't even remember. I mean, I've lived here all my life. I don't think we've ever had big problems down there. Well, maybe we do now. I don't know. <clears throat> um, okay, I got another one. I forgot to talk about it before. Like I say, my mind don't work as fast as it used to. But my daughter got a water bill last week for her house that burned down. Nobody was living there. My daughter, my granddaughter lives in the back, but she teaches school in Waterford, so she's hardly ever home. And they got a bill for 460 or 430 bucks. So I guess she called down here, came down here, I don't know. And I said, well, we read the meter, that's what we got. Well, my grandson says you can't read the meter because it's in the garage and the garage is locked. So I don't know what happened, but they, well, how it got read so high. But I guess they deducted it and it's come out to be about $143. Big difference from 430 to $143. When the house hasn't been there for over almost a year now, as of the 15th of this month, Oh, it was a question I was going to ask. I'm sorry, I slipped my mind. You know, we come to the meet. I come to the meeting. We don't have many people come anymore because some of the outspoken ones, I think, something happened, so they don't come anymore. But I, I usually try to make everyone I can as long as I'm feeling good. Now, I stood here and spoke my piece, and you guys can't answer me, but the Board of Education is here, and we speak to you, you guys discuss them, discuss their problem. And this gentleman from the town, same thing with this problem down at the beach. Now, how come you people can discuss these items with these people and can't discuss them with me? Thank you, and I'll sit here for your response. Terrific. Nobody else in the audience tonight, so uh, we'll move to a selectman's response and then we'll adjourn. There are time clocks in the town hall. Every pe people uh, that work in the town hall punch in. The department heads don't, by rule, throughout the town. town, clock, town, town time clocks have been in the town hall. Police chief already has a contract. It's a four-year contract. It's a it's a four-year contract. It's a salary position. He's not entitled to overtime. His car and personal use, personal use of his car is part of the job as a chief because they are expected to work 24-7 and be always on call. Uh, this gentleman is no different than any other chief in town. We do not typically give police cars out to other personnel in the department, but when it comes to a chief, it's part of the um, character, it's part of what the job entails and requirements of the I'm job. That's very typical, time. okay? I can't, listen, I gave you a shot here. What? I gave you a shot. I can't go back and forth with you right now, okay? We can have a discussion anytime. My door is always open and I'll, and I'll meet with you after the meeting tonight. Uh, I don't like that. Okay. I'd rather meet in public discussion. Um, my, my life's in public, sir. Thank you. May 15th, your house burnt down last year. There was a permit issue. I think there was a legal apartment issue up there. Um, I think there was an engineering issue. I you know we had a meeting that you didn't show up for. I specifically cut it the time away f to have a meeting at this desk. I sat at 3 o'clock in the afternoon one day, and I didn't have anyone show up. Um, and I think there was another meeting that was canceled with a phone call. Um, I know I tried to work with you and, uh, and advocate for you. Uh, I wasn't given the opportunity to, but I know there were several issues on that property. Um, that I think 
delayed the project, sir. Uh, private detective, bring it on. There's no conspiracy. I welcome them, and that person can come into my office and spend three days with me if you'd like. I'll clear my calendar. Looking forward to it. And the, all your issues about the pool, the tennis court, the roof on the old middle school, or the old Lily B, the boardwalk, ancient history, sir. This commission hasn't, hasn't uh, caused any of those issues. If anything, I'm trying to fix problems. Uh, so the pool, roof, probably a big problem. We'll put a, a humidifier in there to fix the problem. It's the best I can do. When, it's the best I can do. The ball field, the baseball field is a shame that it's, it is where it is. And that left field, you, 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 you go down in a ditch because my kid played left field. And he's down in a ditch there. And we can never seem to fix that field. Tennis courts, the same thing. No, they don't belong there. That's where they are. Nobody here voted for that. Sewer consumption will be on, on uh, will be New London sewer consumption. Old Line has to make a contract with New London to take their consumption. Ours will not be affected. We have 100% of our consumption and will not be affected by um, any deal that Old Line makes with New London and it's forced by New London, by the state to take. We're out of that. All we're gonna do is get money, proper money. We're not gonna rip off Old Line and we're most certainly gonna protect the ratepayers in East Lyme, the sewer people. And there have been some issues with the water bills. I've seen them. I've gotten the phone calls. I've personally walked people down to the water department and filled out a form. They have a very good system now to investigate any um, erroneous bills, and we're getting to the bottom of that. I don't know what's going on out there, but we're trying to get it fixed. I think I answered most of the questions. And we can always, like I say, answer more anytime you wish. Are there any other selectmen's responses? Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Or else?